since Breath of the Wild has been out, talking about the Legend of Zelda game, people have tried to glean different lessons from that game and the other Zelda game that's on Switch for wilderness adventuring and, and kind of hex crawling it as part of that. There's always been something about that that's bothered me. I haven't quite been able to put my finger on it, but, but I think I've figured it out. I'm going to tell you, and then you can let me know what you think, how far off I may be. I think we have to differentiate between travel on one hand and exploration on the other hand. When you're traveling, you're going from a known point A to a known point B. When you're exploring, you're starting out from a known point A, looking for, searching for a fundamentally unknown point B. There's a bit of a cloud of uncertainty around that destination. In something like Breath of the Wild, to a certain degree, we trade exploration for travel. You look across the map, you can see that tower there. Once you can see it, once you know it's there, and then you decide to go there, it's not exploration. It's travel. I know that tower's there. I need to get there. On the way, which I think is kind of part of the design that I think is brilliant in those sorts of games, is then you start seeing all the things which you could not see before. All these hidden things. Oh, there's a cave over there. Oh, there's something else over there. And those give you reasons to potentially explore, reasons to stop and veer off the path you were on. Say, hey, I'm going to go check that out. This is separate from the tower itself. So when someone says, as was a comment into a video, of, hey, have all your points of interest be known, and that actually enhances exploration like in Breath of the Wild, I don't think that's true. And it's not because I don't think Breath of the Wild has found a way to enhance the experience. I think that what we're talking about are two fundamentally different things. Yes, what Breath of the Wild does makes it reasonable, easy, and accessible to travel. And you're trading exploration. Some of that's good, some of that might be bad. The good thing is, you know something's out there now. There's none of the frustration you find when you might be exploring, right? You're searching a hex for a point of interest or something. Maybe it's a secret, a lair, a dungeon. You don't know whether it's there or not. So if you spend the time, effort, game time, fiction time, and you don't find anything, that's a frustrating experience. Because it's exploring. You don't know if it's there or not, or not until you find it. In Breath of the Wild, you see the tower. Whether it's there or not is no longer an unknown. You know it's there. Now, you don't know what's inside it, perhaps. You don't know the details about it. Sure, and there's still exploration of a different type kind when you get there. In this case, I'm talking about exploration in the overland hex calling sense, not exploration of discovering the insides of the tower or the insides of a dungeon. By showing you things, it's fundamentally changing the equation. And doing that might make sense in terms of encouraging players to travel. In fact, I'm sure it does in Breath of the Wild, and I'm sure something similar works, would work, or does work in a hex crawl. If you give your players a kind of a player map, and I've done this in the past, that had several points of interest on there, potentially, locations, that's going to spur the players to maybe find one that speaks to them, or they will see one that speaks to them and say, hey, I want to I go there. On their way there, they may, as they're hex crawling, they might find a bunch of stuff that wasn't on that map. Or uh, things that maybe force them to deviate from the map. And when they deviate and they're going into really unknown territories, then they're exploring. But there are two different arms of a hex crawl. Right? You have ex exploration, which can be a part of it, but doesn't have to be. And then travel, which is almost certainly a part of it. So if you're looking at Breath of the Wild as a kind of an exemplar, it's and to me it's an exemplar of what what happens if we make the travel part obvious? What happens if we're placing things on the map that we can get to? So you go from, say, a hex crawl that's a lot of unknowns, where you're just looking at the horizon, you're looking right out of the walls of your village or wherever town that the party happens to be, you don't know what's out there and maybe there's a rumor maybe you've got something but basically you're just walking in the woods and seeing what comes up if anything and instead you're going to well we kind of know what's over there we know there's a big tower maybe or a mountain or some other big kind of landmark and we can shoot for that and then all along the way we're going to run into things that are going to tempt us to explore or may maybe even 
necessitate us exploring. All right, we can see the tower, but there's some grand ravine. We can't get there directly. So now we're going to have to go off the beaten path, try to find a way across the ravine or down and then up the ravine and do things that might be more exploratory. So I do think there's worthwhile things to learn from, uh, from a game like The Legend of Zelda. I'm not sure that if we look at it and just say, hey, everything falls into place when we make our locations visible from a great distance, I don't know that that's catching the whole point. I think it's definitely catching some of the point. I think there is validity to giving, giving the players kind of these far-off things. But Zelda as a whole, as a game, beyond those things, kind of encourages these forays. Maybe it's because you know you can get back easily enough to something that you know to a safe place in a way that sometimes the wilderness is not. Maybe it's because it gives it to you in sort of bite-sized things. You're not going way far off. The end. And I think the worlds in these Legend of Zelda games are pretty small if we were going to map them out. Certainly, I know they bend some rules, I think, of physics and whatnot to just allow you to see things from these great distances. But I think the world itself is crafted mechanically in a way to also facilitate all this stuff in the way that your kind of OSR, D&D, hex crawl probably is not. Now, could we do that? Could we kind of skew physics and things to make things visible from further away or make short distances seem longer or longer distances seem shorter? We could, but I think often we don't want to because we also kind of want to play for the sake of the world as a thing, whether that's right or wrong. Certainly, we could make it more gamey in a way that, say, Skyrim also does, with making the world seem vaster than maybe it is in terms of square footage. Folks have said that Skyrim fits within a six-mile hex. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but a six-mile hex, given that it's 30-some-odd square miles, it might be conceivable. But you wouldn't really feel that running around Skyrim. I think if you're playing in Skyrim, it seems vaster, even if it, even if it isn't. So there's a lot of tricks going on Breath of the Wild, and the idea of being able to pick out a tower and go is just one of them. But like I said, I, I, I heard this and heard the way it's tied to exploration, and it just didn't seem right. But when I think about it in terms of, yes, it eases travel, or it makes possible travel that might otherwise have been exploration. In other words, if you couldn't see these towers from far away, or they didn't appear on your map, or both, then certainly there would still be the exploration aspect. But you might be feeling, am I just walking out in the middle of nothing? And there's nothing's going to be there. And that being a frustrating game experience. Whereas knowing that I can travel to that point. So regardless of what happens, if I deviate here or I deviate there, the fact is I still have this thing that I know is going to be worthwhile. And we know from the way these Zelda games work that as you're discovering these towers, they have value to you. know there's value there. In that way, it's even different than a dungeon, which you might not know has value or what value it has. You kind of understand implicitly what the value of each one of those towers is as you're finding them. So I think there's a fundamental difference there. I do think there's things we can learn from it, but I think we just have to be careful that we learn the right lessons. And I'm not sure the right lesson is just eliminate all exploration in favor of essentially a menu of here are all the points of interest, pick what you want. And I'm not even saying that's a bad way to play the game. Maybe it's just not the way that I would prefer. What I do think is worthwhile is exploring... And this will work for certain kinds of wildernesses different than others. If you have wilderness that's in and around different points of interest, in other words, it's not a here is the border of settled lands and beyond it we know nothing, but it's more like the kind of things we would think about in, say, uh, Arthurian-type legends is you have, you know, castles, towns, villages clustered around those points of light and in between these kinds of areas of darkness it makes a lot more sense that we could say, hey, we're going from Camelot to Camel Yard, and instead of taking this road, which we know we'll get there, we want to go through the funky forest to see what's going on. But we know that regardless of what's going on in the funky forest, on the other side is this place that we can get to, and that gives us a little bit of safety. And maybe we know there's a village to one side or something to the other side, so that we can feel a little bit that when we make these forays out into the wilderness, that they won't be totally vain. I don't know. You tell me. This is something I've been thinking about. It's been on my mind, and when Fluffy the Griffin, thanks Fluffy for commenting, kind of brought it up in one of their comments, it just it brought it back to the fore. And like I said, there's just this little itch in the back of my neck that says, like, I, I just don't quite like it. That's what I came up with. Let me know what you think. Game on. Talk to you later.